My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Let's be with my friends I'm trying to save you some money. My job, not just to entertain, but to teach. Put it in context. Call me, 1-800-743-CNBC, or tweet me, at Jim Kramer. Before we get to the holidays, we got to make it through next week. We have the Consumer Price Index coming on Tuesday and the Fed meeting on Wednesday, both of which are total make-or-break moments, bye, bye, bye. Sell, sell, sell. especially after today's hotter-than-expected producer price index reading. That suboptimal inflation number is one reason the market couldn't get a lift today. Dow dipping 305 points, S&P declining 0.73%, NASDAQ inching down 0.7%. Not a nice day. So what do we do? What do we need to do? To see a, uh, how about a Murray stock market Christmas? Simple. We need to see a cooler consumer price index with the Fed only raising interest rates by 50 basis points and then saying they'll take some time to assess the situation before they tighten again. Data dependency. Why is this important? First off, because today's producer price index number was a couple of tenths of ho- uh, percent hotter than we had hoped for. The Fed likely has no choice now but to hit us with a fi- at least a half point rate cut. Uh, hike. They have to. And the, the number was that bad. That said, the consumer price index is much more important to the Fed's decision making. So we can't have a benign Fed meeting unless we get a benign CPI reading the day before. Is that likely? Hard to say. But I do know this. Two major CPI components will go from inflation to deflation this time around. We've had a dramatic decline in used car prices. <laughs> With playing outsized role in calculating the consumer price index. Meanwhile, the price of gasoline, as we all know, keeps coming down. Currently, it's seven, it oils at 71 bucks. And by the way, it's showing no sign at all of rebounding as Russia keeps flooding the world with crude in order to fund its war efforts. These two inputs, gasoline and cars, aren't broad enough to make the Fed back off. They don't justify no rate hike or even a smaller quarter point hike. But the market expects 50 basis points, and I think we can handle it. The real issue is Jay Powell's commentary after the initial statement. As long as he recognizes that he's already prepped us for a 50 basis point hike and says something about going more slowly in the future, then I think we really could have a terrific Santa Claus rally. All right, with that in mind, what else is in our game plan? All right, it's a difficult week. It really is. There's some interesting things for what should be a sleepy week in December. On Monday, Pfizer has a meeting to talk about the pipeline. Now, this is one of the most exciting drug stocks out there. Remember, Pfizer co-invented one of the mRNA COVID vaccines that's allowing our economy to leapfrog over China's because they refuse to use the good stuff. Pfizer's biggest problem is that people feel there's not much more to the business than its COVID franchise. Flatly untrue. Maybe they can change some minds on Monday. I bet they will. The biggest fear with Pfizer was that they've got some upcoming patent cliffs with major drugs losing exclusivity. But I think they've made enough acquisitions and invested enough in their pipeline to keep delivering impressive new drugs. Also, Monday, we hear from an alpha called Cooper Software. They've been on the show a number of times. Well run cloud software company that handles procure- procurement. Now, we've heard rumors that it might be for sale. Coop is a high multiple stock, but they're doing a great job. Unfortunately, Wall Street's got no patience for these richly valued high growth cloud names as we've seen time and again. It just hasn't since last year, November. Coupa needs to pivot toward higher profits and cash flows rather than growth at all costs. Without that pivot or a takeover, I don't see the stock going anywhere. The most important earnings call of the day comes from none other than Oracle, a gigantic company, which, by the way, has some real bragging rights, given that they just got a piece of a major cloud contract from the Defense Department. Oracle's chronically undervalued. I bet this cloud news plus its recent acquisition of Cerner, an electronic medical records company, could actually ignite the stock. Well, look, I mean, it's 16 times earnings. I just don't see how much there is to lose. Tuesday will be dominated, after the CPI data, of course, by the Lilly Analyst Meeting. While I like the stock, I can tell you this is a conservative company and it has a history of not hyping itself or its drugs. Now, we've got a big position in Louis for the Chapel Trust because of its amazing diabetes, obesity, and potentially Alzheimer's franchises. I think the diabetes drug doubles as a weight loss drug could be the most remarkable, but Louis is a responsible company. 
This thing currently approved, only approved for diabetes, but it is being used widely for weight loss off-label. I, I doubt that they'll publicly uh, they'll talk about this thing. They really can't. Unfortunately, Louis' unwillingness to hype will turn off some investors. I say if you don't already own it, I want you to wait to buy some until after the analyst meeting. If you want to know more, well, you got to join the CNBC Investing Club. We know that the world will come to a stop Wednesday at 2 p.m. when the Fed has used a statement. May I suggest you wait for the world to stop until 2.30? when Jay Powell will go well beyond the statement and get to the heart of the matter. Boy, were people faked out the last time when the statement sounded like Jay was dovish. Then the press conference, he came on like a red-tailed hawk. I wouldn't be surprised if we something similar this time around. In terms of earnings Wednesday, it's Lennar. They report after the close. Gigantic, terrific home builder. Always tells it like it is when Executive Chairman Stuart Miller at the top of the conference call gives us the state of the industry. you got to listen to it. We're in a weird moment where we actually want him to say sales are getting weaker because that's the only way to get this rate hike cycle over with, isn't it? The Fed won't stop until housing cools down. Unfortunately for us, I think Lennar will end up with terrific numbers because they're very good at what they do. I do wish, uh, I, w- I really wish the Fed realized that the home builders are doing everything they can to put up new homes to build supply. They're not the problem. It's just they can't build homes fast enough, and people have too much cash to be stopped right now by higher mortgage rates. On Thursday, we hear from a much maligned now a company, Adobe, which laid an egg the last time it reported and announced it was buying Figma for $20 billion in cash and stock to usher a new era of collaborative creativity. The market hated it. Sure, I know how it looks. Adobe seemingly paid too much money for a small company. Right now, the regulators are debating whether the deal can even happen. Uh, and, of course, everyone's still worried about Adobe's slowing growth rate. To me, that says, you know, don't be opportunistic here. It, 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 it's too soon. Wait to buy this undervalued company because it is, I'm afraid, probably going lower. Now, of course, we've got the investing club meeting, which you know I get a kick out of. I do with Jeff Marks. We got some new ideas. We'll probably have a new buy. I want you to join or else you won't be able to know or you won't be able to be on our 1020 conference that we do every single day. Finally, on Friday, we get results from two very important companies to the firmament. One is Darden, the other is Accenture. Darden's casual dining, think Olive Garden, and it can offer a bargain that can rival home cooking in terms of price. I think as we get into a tougher time here, people will go out to a more reasonably priced place to, get, to celebrate, and that's Olive Garden. I think they'll put up excellent numbers, but some people think the, its stock has run too much. It could hope the whole, up the whole restaurant group. Now, Accenture helps other businesses digitize. This is the company that directs so much business to say the likes of Salesforce.com. They've been doing incredibly well, but the stock does tend to get go down after the quarter. By the way, I, if you think, as I do, that companies will cut back on digitization going forward in order to attempt to save money, you might want to avoid Accenture, too. Bottom line, these big macro numbers and important Fed meetings are a drag. I know. They obscure the actual opportunities out there. I want you to keep your eyes open for ideas and not be blinded by the Fed light. Gavin in Maryland. Gavin. Hey, Jim. Just calling to give Mr. Mark's class a shout out. I want to know what's your opinion on Best Buy. All right. I thought Best Buy had a remarkable quarter, and I know that you're not supposed to want a company that sells discretionary appliances and goods like that going into a recession. And yet, what a fantastic quarter it was. Stock's pulling back now. I think that Corey Bowery should come on the show because I think she's one of the most talented executives in the entire retail industry. John in Michigan. John. Hi, Jim. How you doing? John, it's been a great day. How about you? Oh, great day. I uh, love your show and uh, watch Thank it every you. night. It's so Thank great. You. Learn so much. You really help us all Thank out. you very much. I, Thank I you. That's great. See, Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to see what you think of on holding AG. Uh, tick, tick, ticker uh, symbol O-N-O-N. It's a uh, footwear and accessory manufacturer. And I uh, want to get your uh, right. I'm so glad you brought. I'm so glad you brought this company to my attention. I happen to think it is terrific. It's losing money, so nobody wants to buy it. I think it's a terrific speculative stock. I rarely endorse speculation. I think this one works. I think you got a great call, and I want to thank you for the kind comments. Everybody, I want you to open your eyes and do not be blinded by the Fed light. 
On Man Money tonight, Prometheus Biosides has soared this week on strong phase two results. I'm learning more about what the company's up to here. Then Tyson stock has flown under the radar of late. So are investors getting a buying opportunity in the stock? Or maybe the selling's been warranted. I'm taking a close look at the situation, giving you my take. And could Nucor bring some gains of steel to your portfolio going into year end? I'm getting the latest from the company's top brass, which is now struggling with tariffs again. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.